You're five? Yeah. What's up, dude? Good night. I love you. Good night. Does he need my attention right now? Why is he emotional? Oh, I got you. He's sad. Gypsy is over. Last night of Gypsy. We got two people on. Benny, oh, are we live? Here. We're live now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're live. So Abigail's five. Yes. Yeah. So what's going on with you, dude? I'm tired. <laughs> had a heck all? of a weekend here. We had a heck of a weekend. We had between both days for the Maple Weekend total, probably I'm gonna say three hundred and fifty to four hundred people come through. Wow. Yeah, I, it was it was great. And the weather was not great either. So I think if we would have had better weather, that would have helped. And then come to find out there's a local nature center about 30 minutes away that was having their maple days and weekends with the, a lot more kid activities and family friendly stuff. So we had that. But we also got some of the overflow from that because people were parking like a mile and a half down the road to get there. So they ended up coming here instead too so it was kind of worked hand in hand but uh the maple cotton candy was a showstopper i mean people loved it it was so much fun that's what i did today because obviously we ran out of sap yesterday and i just was making cotton candy and man it was it was a blast i gotta add a moderator hopefully kevin will jump on here Let's see. All right. We got people. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I can see comments now, too. How about that? Somebody. What's up, bottom land? Is this somebody you know? No, he just said, what's up, guys? And he said, block this troll already. Yeah, no kidding. Just bought... Can I make him <laughs> my, uh... Can I make him a moderator? I don't know. I can't see on your your side. You're hosting, no, so you, you know can. this guy. You know Bottomlands. No, I do not. Oh, okay. Bottomlands, are you trustworthy? Can I make you a moderator? So as people start typing <laughs> stupid things, you can. Oh, Amos on. That's awesome. That uh, longtime friend of my parents, my mom and Amo worked together at McDonald's. Oh, sweet. No way. Yeah, Jeff could be a moderator. Yeah, there you go. You're on, buddy. Oh, bottom lands on his cell phone, he says. I got you. Sap supplies moderating. Good deal. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, you get some, you get some weirdos, man. I'm going to uh, grab a Coke real quick. Sounds good. Little cherry Coke action. Sorry, Sounds good, man. I appreciate that. It's great talking with you too. Glad you guys drove down. Can't believe how powerful this YouTube thing has been for Maple as of late. It's yeah. been unbelievable. Just what it's done for all of us. It's not what I thought. What it provided us at the beginning that, you know, what I was thinking we could do, but actually what it's yeah. done is totally different. Yeah. I don't know if you have the same experience or not. No. What, so what was your initial feelings and what do you I think? Mean, I was watching a lot of these dudes doing really well, you know, on uh, YouTube, you know, they're getting deals with Kubota and all these other companies, Steel, DeWalt. I'm like, man, if these guys can do it. I could do it. I'm at least funny, you know? Yeah. So I thought I would uh, jump in there and it would just be easy. Yeah. It's not. So after three years of working hard, like it's finally like kind of working. So I've just yeah. met so many people like yourself, you know, yeah. Scott, I mean, Tim, like the people that we've met in the community, like that's been put a price on that. Yeah. That, that's what I, yeah, I don't want sponsorships. I don't want really any 
type of monetary type thing from it. I want this. Yeah. This is nice. Yeah, yeah. it's worked out pretty well. When still going strong. Going wrong in, in still going strong in Dwayne, New York. I hear yeah. a lot of good things out of Vermont. They're gonna so I'm gonna be up there. Fred and I are gonna leave for Vermont. Um Oh yeah, he's a troll. Uh, just generally, you don't want to ask trolls if they're trolls. Like you don't want to give them like more. You can just tell. Yeah, I can't believe how much work it is to like moderate. It's crazy. Yeah, it's not. It's like I need like ten moderators. Unbelievable, because we're so popular. You know, there you go. The common so like YouTube. Everybody's like waiting. It's 8 30. The Maple guys are going to be on TV. Yeah. They're going to be on soon. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just the, the people that, you know, we've been able to meet. Like uh, yeah. within the Maple, I call them Maple, I call us Maple Tubers. It's just easier. Yeah, so, within the Maple great. Tuber community and then meeting some other, you know, large YouTubers, it's been, it's been cool. Like Sean Spencer's been yeah. very helpful for me. You know, he's got a really, good channel he's just a good dude we talk often like he helps me i help him and to be able to pick up the phone and say man yep there's another one where's jeff <laughs> what in the heck oh yeah like we're super popular dude we're with we're the troll tonight I'm trying. <laughs> are they are they coming up on my screen faster than yours, Jeff? Or just we're just getting hit with trolls all night. You know, who has that much time to I sit there and just scroll? I mean, can you imagine if you had that time to just? <laughs> oh, one of the things I, I never use a fake username. You know, I never use a fake like. My, it'll say Nate Bissell or Bissell Maple Farm, but I don't. In anything I do, if I type something, I'm not going to pretend to be somebody I'm somebody I'm not. I just don't get it. Well, I hide behind it. Yeah. So you've been putting on the miles by the sounds of it. Wow, we just got back from Western Wisconsin, so yeah, yeah, we we went all the way up to Western Wisconsin. We got back. Let's see. Yesterday. Okay. So yesterday. And you didn't was, even stop by. I didn't. I didn't. I, I ended up going through Chicago. Excuses, excuses, Nate. Yep. I go through Malone a lot. So oh. Pat, Packwoods Mountain Maple question. I, I go through my one of my favorite towns is Gavna. I go through Gavna a lot, but Ralph says I'm only allowed to say Gavna in the city limits of Gavna. I'm not allowed to say it before and after because when I see the <laughs> sign, I want to say it. That's from I don't. Well, you've probably seen Penguins of Madagascar. Yeah. You Abigail's five. Like you, Penguins uh, is a good show. Yeah. Right now, it's but, a yeah. lot of uh, princess-oriented stuff. Oh man. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Of... Yeah, I had to watch Cars. Cars, like oh. the original Cars, um, and nobody was happier that Cars Two came out than me. Because Cars was just played over and over, <laughs> over, and over, and over. You know? and then yep. Cars two came out. And I was like, "This is awesome! <laughs> I don't have to watch Cars one anymore." Oh, that's great! Yeah, it's Bluey or uh, some type of princess thing, Moana or Elsa or all that fun stuff. Sure. So, so we got <laughs> Jeff. I hope he's on this. Maybe he doesn't get the. Uh, the stuff as fast as we do. I don't know. I, th I think he is. I think he's got a full time job with it tonight. By the looks of things, yeah, yeah. Jeff is going to get a. He's going to be sweaty. Like by the time from the workout of dealing with trolls, <laughs> he's he's never going to uh, volunteer again. Yeah, like <laughs> Jeff, he's like he's going to be sitting there <laughs> waiting to go so, one way or the other. What's your plans for Vermont then? So I'm heading to. Um, Gary Corey's place. He's got 120,000 taps, and he is at. He's already made 55,000 gallons of maple syrup. I mean, 
Right. It's just that's like oh he's going to make as much maple syrup one dude as the state of Ohio. That's like insane. I mean that's recorded, right? I think Ohio says they make seventy five thousand gallons, but it's probably closer to two hundred thousand gallons because we have a large Amish population. But fair, yeah, fair. it's just hard to comprehend. Like we don't even get that much. You know, some people don't get that much sap in a year. Fifty five thousand gallons of sap. He's he's got to figure out where to store it. Like for sure. That's interesting. Well, think about me and a buddy were talking about this today. Um, think about the permeate alone. That's a river coming out of there. Oh, like, yeah. where is all of that? Like, are they trying to save it to sell it, or are they just running it right down, right in? You know, I, mean, I don't know. I haven't been there yet. I'm gonna go to his brother's place. So I'm gonna go to Gary's. Then I'm gonna go to his brother's place, uh, Jeff. Then I'm gonna head back. Uh, hopefully, catch Dan Crocker for an update because he had his tap holes are still running. Guys, he was making syrup on December sixth. Wow, that's so two days. His tap birthday. holes are still running, so he has a theory on this whole like tapping too early. Like everybody wants to make say things to make themselves feel better, but here's a guy whose tap holes are still running in December. You know, he tapped in December, yeah. and it's what March. That's like four months. Like, That's what the crazy. heck am I doing wrong, man? <laughs> so I, I wonder, he's stubbies. probably running his vacuum 24-7. And yeah, stubbies, he probably got a lot of flow. Check spouts, 42-inch drops. His drops are 11 years old. And he's going to make eight pounds. There you go. So, you know, everybody's got their theories and stuff. And a lot of people, you don't want to confuse them with the facts because they already made their mind up. You know, so yeah. I can't wait to make a video that's just it's going to irritate people. Well, part of me wonders, too, you know, like if soil type and obviously like temperature, like being in the mountains on the backside where the sun doesn't hit because it's in the shade. You know, there's some other factors there to take in account, too. I I feel, but I could be completely wrong. But just logically thinking, you know, that might have something to do with it as well. So it's true. Somebody had mentioned that uh, I need to look north, and I am. Um, there's an operation for sale in Vermont that we're looking at. Um, certainly, yeah, I would like like to get a hundred thousand taps running into your sugar house. Like you can't even fathom that in Ohio. There's just not that much wooded land. Oh. The land is worth more for housing. Yeah. So. <laughs> Plus it's flat. Plus it's flat. Out of boy, Jeff, get them. I can't even see them. They're coming in so quick. Oh, they're coming in fast, but it's all right. Oh, there we go. I tapped with stubbies and check valves. February twelfth. Mine are still going. Yeah. Where, I don't where know. are you from? Just, uh, Malone, he's he or she's from Malone, New York. Okay. So that's up along. So if you ever go to Vermont, at least from our area, we take the northern route um, up along the, you know, we take 90, yeah. go north of Watertown, and then we go the northern route. Yeah, microclimates do. So northeast Ohio, if Lake Erie doesn't freeze, you know, and it just warms up, you're, you're kind of done. Yep. I'm I'm still going somehow some way. That's it's kind of funny. So obviously we had the Maple Weekend here. Well, um, there was about nine different producers that showed up to my event this weekend because they heard that I was still getting sat. <laughs> yeah, like, they wanted to see it. Oh yeah, and they I don't think anybody really believed me, and they like, well, it's got to be you know cloudy, stinky, nasty stuff, and I invited them back to the evaporator, you know, and was like, Hey, push down on the float. Take a look, look what's coming in. And they're like, they couldn't believe it. And they're like, it smells good. Taste. I mean, tastes good. Everything. And I was like, are you done? Are you, are you done or still going? No, no I'm still going, Nate. I'm the only one within about an hour, hour and a half. That's still, still going. And it's because of my check valves and my sanitation practices. It, it really is. That's that's the only thing I got to it because, like I so told it you, it started over for you. This freeze helped. It did. It saved my butt. I mean, if we would have had, I think it was close enough to two or three days more of warm, 
it would have been. But because I use the check valves and I, you know, keep my pumps run until after things freeze up or I, I keep it clean. And uh, I'll tell you what, the one, the woods that I have the check valves on, the ones that I don't, you know, remember I did that side by side test with the same pump, tap the same day and all that. I had like 30 gallons of sap in that tank without the check valves and like 140, 150 with the check valves. I mean, that, that's, that has to be the difference. It, it, you know, so. So Dave said he'd love to give a tour. Dave, uh, how many taps do you have? Not that it matters. It just gives me an idea. Because I have, um, uh, we launched a video of a smaller operation today. And then we're doing another one. Um, a week. I see that. What? Micro. 2,500 taps still going. What's the weather like up there in Ontario? It's a little cooler north. Yeah. Right across Lake Erie. It's like, you know, Lake Erie just, it's warming us up, on you know, instead of cooling us down right now. Yeah, I'm hoping to get an evaporator from different manufacturers and just do a, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. Like, what would be fair? Same wood source. Same yeah. day, same barometric pressure. All lined know, up around us, the same time. Yep. Same yeah. timer. Like everybody fires. You're only allowed to use X amount of like, we have to get it down. I don't want anybody saying like, um, you know, well, he fired it harder. Like we're going to, yeah. I'm, th I'm thinking about just having Austin just run back and forth. Just the same dude doing it all. <laughs> well, you, you could have a person right in front of each one and you could use pallet wood. That way it's all the same thickness and say three pieces of pallet wood that's the same length at the same time. The, the problem with pallet wood is that it's not what people really would fire with. I know people will fire with anything. That's just true, but it, it would be the same technical thickness. and Yeah, because you can't weigh each piece of wood. No. But hey, we have to give the manufacturers some sort of like, well, that wood from the same pile from the same you know yeah. uh, wasn't the same <laughs> but look we're only talking like 35 gallons per hour like that's what a two by six is rated at like a stock two by six 35 gallons yeah, per hour preheater and all that yeah probably. yeah and then once you add a blower and a preheater and airtight arch and air over like these i mean people are souping these up to like 500 horsepower you know it's like yeah you know it's well, it's it crazy Scott. Look at Scott's. Yeah, what did he say he was getting? Dude, I want to say he was 80-something. Well, here's the thing that I think everybody needs to realize, that evaporation rate, when you're drawing off, that doesn't count towards your evaporation rate. So if I put 60 brick syrup in a 2 by 6 and I started running, how fast is it going to become syrup? I'm going to have a 300-gallon-per-hour evaporation rate. like. You see what I mean? That's why boiling water. Water. Yeah. I see. Yeah. We're see just gonna bring yeah. yeah, because you know, when my rig starts when my rig starts drawing off hundred gallons an hour, do I add hundred gallons an hour to my evaporation rate? No. Yeah, I see. It's yeah. not evaporating it. It's not a, so if you use you know high bricks in the two by six and you call it evaporation rate, no. No. Yeah, like that's you fair. can't do that. That's fair. People watching. That's true. That's the best part about the two by six hot rod special. Steady twenty five gallons per hour. Yeah, like thirty five. When I had my old two two by six D and G, it was the uh, it was a drop flu two by six. You know, it was thirty five gallons per hour stock, and a good day if the barometric pressure was. Uh, you know, was up instead of pushing down on your evaporation, you know, you get 38, <laughs> 42 if you were drawing off, <laughs> yep. you know. So I had a Sunrise Metals from the place there in Indiana, and uh, it was wood when I got it. And I wanted to put a fuel oil gun on the front. And I called down there and they're like, that's really cool. If you can figure out how to do it, let us know type thing. They're like, that would be cool. Well, that had a drop flu. And I ended up putting a Carlin 301 on there with a three and a half 
gallon an hour tip. And uh, I had a preheater, steam hood, and I was right about 65 gallons an hour on that unit. She 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 ripped. The problem mm. was is that I had, you know, about 800 taps on it and the sugar sand. I'd have to shut down in about two hours, three hours of boiling because the sugar sand would be so bad and I have to switch the whole front pan. It's just too much volume. Yeah, if you watch um, or listen to any of these guys that have switched from conventional evaporators to steam, <clears throat> they basically had multiple sets of pans. And as soon as the scale would build up, they'd have to shut down, switch pans. Yep. These steam rigs, you know, there's a reason, a scientific reason, but um, they don't run as hot at the surface, right? So they're not going to get you know, a thousand degrees. So when a flame hits the bottom of a pan at a thousand yep. degrees, that means that liquid at the surface right there is darn near a thousand degrees, but steam's not going to get that hot. Yeah. So they're pushing the BTUs through it, but it's, it's more of an indirect heat. Well, yeah. And it just doesn't get as hot. Like the yep. peak, you know, the peak metal temperature is not as hot. So, you know, also the scale buildup is not as extreme. So you're actually getting more minerals in you know, no one's figured this marketing out. So here's me, an old boiler chemistry guy. It's like you're getting more mineral minerals with boiler steam, uh, steam made maple syrup. But you know, because us regular guys are carrying it out and cleaning it out. You know, it's not in the maple syrup. So think of that. That's a way to make a little marketing advantage for you, steam guys. Is there's more minerals in our maple syrup? Yes, yes, there is because you yeah. haven't pushed it out. Interesting. Uh, Maplewood Farms. I am. Are you? Are you Nate? Going What's to that? the open the open houses in Vermont? At, in, in I don't April? know. I kind of want to. Um, I know. I kind of want to. I don't know. Yeah. Scott's um, going. I mean. Really? Yeah, we should yeah. all meet up then. Yeah, It'd trying to convince Tim into doing it, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah, he just needs to get to our house, and we'll take him the rest of the way. There you go. He needs it. He'll enjoy it. He does. He needs to get he, will, he will be the most popular guy there. Like, there's no doubt. <laughs> like, if he's walking, everybody's going to be like, the maple dude. It'd be hilarious. It'd be so fun. <laughs> we'll have to put a booth up so we can just sign autographs. Like, everywhere we go, we'll have to, like, set up a little cardboard booth. Yeah. A little do, line. Do, we should people. do a, ki a kissing booth for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so how many of those minerals come out in the RO? Um, uh, well, it, there shouldn't be. So, I mean, mm. it can build up on your membranes. However, it should be in the solution. Uh, the, you know, the mineral should be in there. But they do. They run 20. Uh, the, the rule that Clayton told me is for every one horsepower of your boiler, <laughs> let's see if I do this right, using 20 brick sap for every one horsepower you make, a gallon of syrup, I think. I, I probably screwed that up. Hmm. I'll have to get it right. Yeah, two by um, eight is such like people don't realize like how much more efficiency you get out of a two by eight over a two by six. So yeah, Smoky Lake two by eight. I got 110 gallons an hour through it, preheater and blower. I was impressed. Wow. Yeah. That's very good. So my yeah. questions would be like um Hour one versus hour two. Is that a wood fired evaporator or are you hitting the switch and you're you're up and rolling, you know, in 10, 15 minutes? Well, he says blower, so it's gotta be wood. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, preheater blower. Like that's a that's a really good performance, you know. But it what's is. a rig like that cost? Dave, what what does a rig New? like that cost? Like, yeah, New? I mean it's, he just uh, bought so one. with a preheater, so he's got steam hood. Uh, Smoky Lake, they're usually a little cheaper. I bet you that's got to be a thirteen thousand dollar rig. Fourteen. Yeah, I well, think more. I think, really I think a liter two by six is ten. Was what Andy told me this weekend. You're at ten grand for yeah. a two by six. Yeah. Now. Well, they've went up too. It, you know that same unit. What three, four years ago was probably sixty five hundred. Right. So we run ninety gallon per hour, but that's on an intensifier arch with a steam away. Wow. Yeah, steam away makes a big difference, but it it's does. so complex. From a manufacturing standpoint, I'm pretty sure that Clayton's steam rigs are about a they're they're less complex than a steam away. Like steam aways are really complex. There's a lot to them. 
yeah. they do really help your efficiency. There you go. 18. Wow. What's P- what's POD mean? I don't know what that is. Pod. Probably pick up on delivery or something. Oh, paid on delivery. Paid on delivery. You know, something. Yeah, CODs uh, charged on delivery. 18. Yeah, so see, everything's up right now, you know. Mm-hmm. That's that that's probably right with stainless and everything right now. Gotcha. The nicest part of the steam away is the hot water. There's a yeah, lot of Yeah, you can use that to clean. Yep. Yep. That's true. I was talking to my wife about when we do this and how, you know, just like the differences on where we are in our careers and just our maple syrup journeys. And like, I can relate, you know, cause it's, um, you know, I started off in a two by six and, you know, got my first RO and just kept growing it. And yep. so I can relate. Right. Yep. But I think it's for me at this point, like I, I want to talk more about like personnel things like culture. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know for you guys, it's like, you're, you know, it's so what she's, she was suggesting is like, Hey, we talk maple stuff, you know, because everybody wants to talk maple and the next gadget is going to help them make an extra, you know, two gallons of evaporation. And then as yeah. you get into this further and further, you realize how little that matters. Yeah, like it's so important to people because it's a hobby and they just they enjoy it. Who are you going to talk to yeah. about it? Like my wife, at some point, she's just like, "Stop talking about maple. I don't want to hear about maple anymore." Yeah, so that's why we do this, right? Like yeah. we get a chance to talk maple. Yep. Yeah. So bottomlands. I am forty-four. I am thirty-four. We're ten so years apart. We are ten years apart, sir. I'll be dean. Yep, you're the same age as my brother. Were you born in ninety? 89, December of 89. All right, you're a little older than my brother. Almost 90. Almost 90. Yep. And how many years, like, I was lucky that when, uh, oh, this is a good question. Um, I was lucky that my dad did it. I realize now how fortunate I am. Like, I wouldn't be in this position. Yeah. Even though my dad was a hobbyist and he had a two by four English tin, you know, evaporator. That got me so far ahead because I actually knew something. Yeah. You know, starting from scratch today without knowing anything, you know, like my dad, like but there was a culture of it in Northeast Ohio. Yeah. There's a culture of maple. Yeah. But without my dad, you know, carrying that tradition, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. That's the, I wish I had had something similar to that. I mean, it does. Like, imagine if yeah. somebody was there to like, I mean, we had some arguments, trust me. Like, you know, I'm like, dad, it's 63 bricks. It's good enough, you know? Because <laughs> it's so hard when you're carrying buckets of sap and you're, you know, it's like, dad, this isn't really legally syrup. You know, there was some friction because I was trying to make uh, it into a business and he had it just to give away. And listen, yeah. 63 syrup bricks, there are 63 brick syrup is still delicious on pancakes. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. So good question. Um, this will be, you know, we're 31 minutes in. This is a, a bourbon barrel aged maple syrup nugget for those that you those of you that make it. And one of the challenges with bourbon barrel aged maple syrup is if there's any residual in the barrel, that all of our analytical equipment that we use to measure syrup is based on uh like a refractive index. So if you're using a light, the way it works is is if you stick your hand in water like if you're ever swimming and you stick your hand in water in like a a pool or a pond and it bends at an angle your arm's not bent but you know what i mean there's an angle light will water will bend light at the same angle so they take that 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 number and that's how they build uh, like a refractometer yeah so it's it's using that light bends or light bends at the same angle in water so it uses that um i don't know it's a it's a principle. It's a you know it's like gravity. It's a scientific yeah. fact that light bends at this angle. So they make a piece of machinery that'll that'll measure it. Yeah. As soon as you add ethanol, it's no longer bending at the same angle. So if you're trying to measure maple syrup with a refractometer that's been in a bourbon barrel, you're toast. Like it's not going to work. Interesting. 
it'll actually, I can't remember which one it'll measure high or low. Same thing with a hydrometer. Those hydrometers, you know, the little glass thing, yeah. Yeah. it'll be the opposite. It'll actually measure at either high or low. I can't remember which one. Yeah. So if you use one of those pieces of instrumentation to measure, it'll be either read high or low because both of them are calibrated at water. So yeah. as soon as there's any ethanol, all the measurements that you're using in bourbon barrel aged maple syrup is it's gone. Oh, yep. It's gone. So that there's all sorts of yeah, there's all sorts of like everybody's got their own like theories and crap and none of them are right. But <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> it's true. Like yeah. even me, like I worried about it initially and then I even so far as went to actually measure the bulk density of maple syrup that's been in a bourbon barrel because how do you know how much bourbon's in that barrel? What'd that barrel weigh before the bourbon went in there? Yeah, there's so many variables there. Yeah, you can't know. Infinite variables, yeah. Yeah, you can't know. So what I noticed was this crown was putting on their label less than 2%. So it must be okay. Like, that's what crown did. They just said less than 2%. Okay. So either they're, either they're pre-measuring the bourbon as they dump it in the barrel. Maybe. Or they've done some analytical testing and said, hey, it seems to be that no matter what we use, this is where it's at. Who knows? Uh-huh. Interesting. But yeah, it's really, you just can't know. Do you need to reheat to recan to evaporate? What is the question? Need to reheat and recan oh. to evaporate? Question mark. Uh, All things wood, heat, down. and maple there. Uh, green picture there. I uh, used to boil everything off so when i first started doing this about 10 years ago i would boil off all of the alcohol because you can see that it'll boil off at about 100 that well alcohol boils off at 100 173 degrees this okay. is where everybody's wrong they think because they boiled it up to 173 and what'll happen is it'll actually foam and it'll get little droplets it almost looks like uh i don't know um like seltzer water like these little droplets will come out and that's yeah. the alcohol leaving the maple syrup. Okay. It's almost all of the alcohol leaving the maple syrup. So almost. Yeah. there's something called an azeotrope, those darn azeotropes. And what that is, is the alcohol, to water molecule bond. And the only way you're going to ever break it is if you cook it all the way down to sugar. So if anyone says I boil all the alcohol out, you're lying. And it's not your fault. You just don't know that. It's a, there's yep. an azeotrope, so you can't boil it all off. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah, this is so <laughs> this is when good. People say, when people say there's no alcohol in bourbon barrel aged maple syrup, like no, like unless the laws of physics don't apply in your sugar house. And I know some farmers where the laws of physics don't apply in their sugar house. It's like, <laughs> was that a time traveler? Was that a time traveler right there? Just walked <laughs> through your sugar house? Yeah. It, uh, yeah. So here's Nate being funny on Coke. Uh, I love it. Cherry Coke. Yeah. So the azeotrope. So you can't boil it all off. And then you think about it. It's like, well, what's my customer buying? What are they buying? When a customer buys bourbon barrel aged maple syrup, what is the consumer? Not you, not the farmer. Your opinion means zero. What is the consumer purchasing when they pick up a bottle of bourbon barrel aged maple syrup? They're buying bourbon aged maple syrup with a trace of alcohol. Yeah. So, you know, for us, we still pack at 193 degrees. That's about the max. So about 190, 193. Yep. If you go over 193, you might as well filter. You know, you're going to create sediment yep. again. So that's kind of the magic seven. number. Okay. So 190 degrees, you're going to boil off almost all the alcohol yeah so almost. we've kind of like there's no standards for this there isn't like the maple That's industry true. needs standards but we can't even put maple syrup in a bottle correctly like half the industry what it what they do uh, in the maple news like half the bottles of maple syrup in vermont aren't the right grade aren't the standard half that's we're I worried know. about bourbon barrel aged maple syrup and by the way the inspectors that, that are supposed to be regulating us are a little bit more worried about a child dying from consuming shellfish they're not supposed to eat like there's like real life or death things correct in the world like 
I dare you to call the inspector up and say, hey, my neighbor, his bourbon barrel aged maple syrup, if my <laughs> child consumes 25 gallons of it, they would be drunk. Like, <laughs> Right, hey, that's killing me tonight, man. <laughs> like there oh. are people that they are, they are that like, like no, mm-hmm. these guys have real lives and they're worried about like salmonella. Yeah, you know salmonella. Yeah. You know that maple syrup. The worst thing that can happen is you get fermentation, then it converts to alcohol and tastes like vinegar. That's it. Yeah. And no one, you know, no one wants to take a swig of maple syrup and taste vinegar. Now, if you wanted maple vinegar and you knew you were consuming maple vinegar, you would be kind of ready for it. Yeah. But if you poured vinegar on pancakes for somebody and handed it to them and they didn't have any sort of, you know, sense of smell. Oh, then, uh, you know, they'd probably, what the heck? You know, it's a little bitter. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a bad deal. And then the other portion is, is there is naturally occurring alcohol in maple syrup. Yeah. So if we start regulating how much alcohol is in maple syrup, you ever have a, a drum that looks like a weeble wobble? You always no. let the new guy open that one just to teach him, like, you know, the, the plastic drums, like, you know, it looks like a football. Yeah, I know what you're saying. And it's I've off never to had the side. That. You've never seen this? No. Oh, my gosh. Well, we, buy, we buy so much syrup that I've seen a lot of things, and I'm sure I haven't seen it all. So you, you've got a, a plastic drum. The 30s, like the problem with plastic is it's porous. Porous. So oh, yeah. I, won't, yourself, yeah, I won't put in plastic. You know, if you take a drum opener on a barrel that's got like 50 PSI on it. Oh, yeah. Like I want to put a pressure gauge on one someday, but how do you do it? Yeah. I guess you could do it with a valve. Yeah, you can no, thread you and tap it and put a, a gauge on it. Yeah, but by the time you thread it and tap it, it's it's gone. But anyways, yeah, we love it when the new barrel is going to do it ahead of time. Is what I'm saying. We love it like when re, the new re, guys. recreate it. Yeah, we, you'd almost have to like puncture and hold. Yeah. So. Oh, I love it. So Dave, yeah, the them. new guys always like there's foam, so the fermentation will create foam. So you're always like, you know, hey. Uh, New guy, grab that drum wrench, and you're all sitting back like, <clears throat> like dumb and dumber. Eat up, and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> How's your burger? Yeah. Nice, funny. So what happens? Is it just? Oh yeah, you just you wear it. Oh. You wear it. So, and it happens slowly. Like the reason that maple syrup, you know, sixty six bricks, sixty seven if you're sixty six point nine if you're in Vermont is that's like the maximum solubility of sugar and water and it takes longer for the fungus to convert it because that's what yeast is yeah to convert it to alcohol so it'll it'll eat down a little bit and then the um let's see first it goes from sugar to alcohol alcohol to vinegar so the back acetobacter is the bacteria that converts it to you know vinegar so it just yeah it'll slowly work its way down yeah but the thing is is you know if you go taste a drum and you taste right on top what are you going to taste you're going to taste that vinegar yeah but over time and somebody told me this i think it was matt emmerich the amish figured out after they open a drum crack it leave it cracked because if you close it off the fermentation is going to create co2 and it actually pushes it further down into the syrup further down. so if you ever walk into somebody's storage area and you just hear from the fermentation that syrup will actually be better than somebody who tightens the lid interesting yeah this is good stuff i don't know if this is helpful there's 71 people that's good stuff Lots of fur babies, uh, apparently. I see. Dave, are your trees? No, my trees are not done. I actually just took in the highest sugar content I have had all season. Figure that one out. I took in 1.9%. <laughs> no kidding. I couldn't believe it. And it was clear, good. I mean, that's what I was saying. I had a lot of producers in the area showing up this weekend, looking and checking things out. Are you still pulling from the other woods, too, or just the woods that's still running? Uh, I'm going to try pulling from it. I'm going to see what happens just just for giggles. 
it's kind of my own little experiment but with the ones that are running i'm definitely pulling but i am going to turn all the pumps on just just to see and keep keep the documentation going good question let's see will bourbon barrel syrup well there's bourbon barrel aged maple syrup and bourbon barrel syrup uh, let's see crystallized oh that's what happens is people use the maple syrup measurement systems on bourbon barrel aged maple syrup and then what happens is you end up getting your bricks too high and then you create all sorts of very cool science projects in your bottle like i so before we figured this out i had a bottle of rum barrel aged maple syrup and it had like one giant crystal in it it's like it was kind of like the i don't know you know those boats they put in glass bottles yeah like you know i should have dumped yeah. all the syrup out and just left this giant crystal inside and be like how'd i get that in there you know yeah what i did was <laughs> i made bourbon barrel aged maple syrup that was too high in density and then measured it with a refractometer <clears throat> don't do that so it must be reading lower then because if you're overdoing like, well, it, I think, sugars, I think... it must it must be reading must read lower so that because you're over density in it that must yeah, be if, if anybody has both measurement systems and they're in their sugar house right now and they got nothing better to do go <laughs> grab a, a hydrometer <laughs> and go grab a refractometer and tell us which one's which they will not read the same thing because they work on different mechanisms oh boy you just don't want to crack the same drum 20 times <laughs> yeah maple farmers are so gullible like i can already tell where this is going let's do this oh glad you like the memes <laughs> I've been what slacking lately. I've been I've been a little busy. Interesting. The barrel will wick water from the syrup if not soaked. What are they saying? The barrel will wick water from the syrup. Uh, if not, might. all this the, the, the barrel soaked. Is that what they're saying? Like soak the barrel first? Like yeah, I see all sorts of things that you know. I would, I, at some point, there's probably nobody better to teach this class on barrel aged syrup. But it's, um, yeah, at some point, I'm, I should just like, I see so much stuff that isn't true at all. And uh, like time, time does not matter at all. People think it does, it's, it's, it doesn't. You just like the story, and most people do. So Jeff is definitely busy tonight. Yeah. Are you? I think he probably take. Is he sleeping? <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Know. What are you doing? Or he's doing that slow. He's probably getting the kids to bed. Probably. No, he's after it. Oh, there he he's is. After it. He's gonna be like never again. He no, he's never. This is a one and done. <laughs> we appreciate but everybody you, Jeff. should. Everybody should repair the density or fix the density. There he is, multitasking. You're doing good, bud. We're just giving we, you crap. You know, we check density always so you should you you, end you up know when i came down time. there i forgot to get that chart from you by the way i need to make it available yeah i'm trying to also chip in because it gets old like we're we trying to read outside of ours with water also interesting rehydrate the wood yep that makes this does that help, Nate? Does that really help rehydrate keep well, wood hydrated? It's a waste of time. Like I don't do it because it doesn't really. Yeah, interesting. I'm sure it does, but it doesn't. I don't because you know. in in theory, you're putting that hot syrup in, and there's only so much surface area in the barrel. Once it touches that, it's pretty much over, right? Yeah, and, and it, like it's over. It, it doesn't matter how long it's really in there. It's it's over. And my yeah, yeah. I mean, there is the fact that when the maple syrup shrinks, because when it's hot, it expands 10%. A lot of people don't know that. Like, syrup, it expands yeah. when well, hot. Well, you can tell that when filling glass bottles, it's full. Yeah. Then you come out, and it's down an inch. You're like, what the heck? Yeah. Yeah, so when it shrinks, you're creating vacuum. Yeah. And when you create vacuum, what's it pulling? Air. What's inside the barrel? I see. Yep. So it's really good. 
so basically if it's in there for 24 hours it's peaked and done or, or yeah i think as soon as the maple syrup cools it's done interesting yeah it, not i think i know that's cool but that's everybody's cool. like i age it okay <laughs> My customers are I mean, always like, how long do you want me to, how long do you age it for? I'm like, how long do you want me to age it for? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I will put on there whatever you'd That's like. Cool. Yeah. For anybody that does bourbon syrup, this is really good for them, man. This is, this is good yeah, stuff. It's, you know, it's the truth. Well, how many barrels have you done? You know what I'm saying? Like just that's thousands and thousands that's what i'm saying yeah just but really you can't argue, you can't argue with somebody like that <laughs> but really <laughs> how much have i screwed up a lot <laughs> a lot there's a lot of people out there that are just using i gotta make kevin a uh <laughs> i'm gonna make kevin a mo oh he's already a moderator i guess once i make you a moderator you're a moderator for life oh man Is there a golden amount time to age? We just pretty much answered that. Yeah. Um, no, really. It's like once the syrup cools, you're done. Age time doesn't months. matter. I'm going to make people's heads explode. <sighs> time doesn't matter. It only matters to you and your customer. Yeah. Like nobody wants. Like nobody wants to hear. Like I leave it in there so there's a story, but it doesn't matter because no one's like, well, how long do you age your syrup? Mm, uh, solid forty-eight hours. Like no one wants to hear that story. That, yeah, no. So yeah. We age it for the story, not because it matters. Interesting. People's minds are just going to start like twitching. Like, <laughs> no, -uh. I can Love tell. It. Oh, okay. N no, you can't. <laughs> it's called a uh, confirmation bias of some sort. <laughs> Well, it might do a little bit. I will concede it could do a little bit, but I don't think it does much. I want to get into that uh, smoking end of things like you were talking about and that one guy doing it that I really want to try it because I have my smoker and all that. It, do you I, like I maple syrup really... that tastes like an ashtray? No, but I there's people <laughs> that I, I want to try it. I really do. Because there's these, there's the people that you know burn with wood that there's I told you about the guy locally that no RO wood fired only and sells it as traditional wood smoked flavored syrup basically I mean that is his thing and he you know it'd be interesting to add a little bit of smoke flavor to syrup and just see and market it and just see kind of where it went so. Yeah, I mean, it's an off flavor, but so is bourbon barrel age flavor. So, yeah, you know, but people might if, really if be like, oh, thing, wow, wood, you know, wood, wood, maple wood smoked maple syrup. What is this? Let's try, you know, you just never. I saw a question on, uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't like smoke in my syrup. It's just me. Do you blend your syrup for bourbon? I need more information. That's a, that's about what eight eight words. I need a little bit more information on your question. Let's see. This syrup tastes yeah. like. <laughs> see, Kevin's good at this because he knows, like, he, he knows that most maple farmers don't really start their intro with "sup, dude" or "sup, sup, dude." Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I made it once in my front pan. Yeah, me too. That's the worst feeling in the world. Oh. Yeah, Kevin, he's got practice. He does this for uh, a Pew Pew channel. Oh. So he's a moderator. So he's got practice. He can kind of tell. Is this the one that hides all the wrenches on you? No. 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 <laughs> that guy, he uh, definitely got it in there, didn't he? Uh huh. That's funny. Sure did. It's my uh, my I iconic SAP chat logo. It's that's what's be. doing. It is it's because 
we're getting all the I got I I can't use it anymore. I thought it was clever, you know. It kind of played on the whatever yeah. what was it called? Snapchat. Snapchat. It played on the I mean I even kind of like made it look like the logo and everything, so we're getting yeah, all the, really the, the degenerates of the world. You should see some of the people that have been applying for work with us. Holy smoly. Really? Yeah, we we're just almost to like the unemployable within the country. There are some good ones, don't get me wrong. There's yeah. definitely some good ones. But just some hilarious that text you was sending back the other day was I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. You're like, just yeah. go with it. <laughs> yeah, we just kept it going. Yeah, how long did it go for? Did it just no, it was definitely some interaction. I don't know. That's probably mean, but it was funny. Yeah, that's true. Good point, Jeff. Yeah. It's uh only saps logo. That's what we need, and only saps. Nice. Well, I mean, these people probably have their people, right? They probably have their people. So, so there's yeah, no probably doubt. some gaming channel or something that they 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 watch on YouTube, and then they're like, "Hey, let's go mess with the maple farmers." It's kind of fun. <laughs> they're on the gaming channel right now, like whatever language you're speaking. The like, sad hey, part is they're probably somehow getting paid to do it too, or something. I know, I know, it's funny. That's the, yes. Yeah, they're gaming and messing with the maple farmers. I'm guessing like, bots. Are, are bots that smart? Dude, well, look at AI. I don't know. Oh, that's not a good deal there. So, uh, you know, anybody chat GPT is that smart? Like, it can get on here and be a, like, a pretend to be something? Like, how does it do that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just keep reading the lyrics of Country Boy Can't Survive. That's what you need to do. <laughs> what else do we have? I I'm I don't know how many people are watching that are from Wisconsin, but yeah. I'm pretty excited. We are going to buy 100,000 gallons of maple syrup from Wisconsin. I mean, I'm excited about that. Yeah, I, that's, I didn't know if you wanted to bring that up or not. That's why I hinted yeah. earlier. You've been traveling. I was... Didn't know if you wanted to sure. talk about that or not. Yeah, I mean, we're just in a good position. We have a good syrup buyer. Um, we're going to be paying over what the current market rate is in Wisconsin. I imagine that the price is going to go up once people see that I'm going to be higher than everybody. So you're welcome, Wisconsin farmers. Nate Bissell is increasing the price of your maple syrup in Wisconsin. You're welcome. So Out there fighting for everyone. Thank I you, guess. Just, <laughs> now, yeah, come I don't really again. even, <laughs> by the way, I don't care what other people do. Like, I don't, I'm not reacting. They're going to react to me. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not reacting. Like, I, I have my customer base. We got a large contract. Uh, that syrup indirectly was already ending up in that contract. Yeah. So we're just like, you know, hopefully. Yeah. Um, well, what's that you're talking about? You're leading by example. We're you're growing together. You're going direct. You're helping the you know smaller maple producers, and you're working together and growing together. That's perfect. That's yeah, it's just I guess business. customers, right? So the customers yeah. I go after, and you know, I'm not trying to be the cheapest packer in the world. It's just not a good a race to the bottom. I have no interest. No, that so. doesn't do anybody any good. So it's a good question there. I am. Uh, we were we were actually filming this weekend and we were gonna you know that uh Facebook video where the guy like plays with the cake for like 30 minutes and he's like, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be awesome. And he like he gets ready, it's gonna be a big volcano, it's gonna be a beautiful thing, and then you never get there. Like he never like that's that's what oh, it's always one more little thing. I yes. know I've seen those videos, I haven't seen that one, but I've seen videos like it just to keep you hooked, like what's oh, gonna happen any second, and then something else, it just yeah, never, yeah. I, so we were going to do that with like make the title like the bulk price of maple syrup and then every time we were about to say the price just like <laughs> stop like well you were going to say something you know and just like work together and just like for an hour not say the bulk price of maple syrup people keep fast forwarded and look at it and you just get mm. <laughs> that's mm. good but if you fast forwarded it you just missed us to, you know back in the video go like, back you could really you know 
That's mean. Uh, it really is, but no, I was like, that would that's be good. That's good. 450 pounds. <laughs> yeah. So it will be, you know, announced, but we we will be higher than the uh, the Packers in uh, Wisconsin. I believe they're paying 220 for the top three grades. Um, last I knew. But we're not going to keep it a secret either. Like, no. Yeah. If your business model re- um, requires secrecy, that's not a business model. That's called a scheme. <laughs> that's what that's called. Yeah. Like, yeah. No. So, right. So, basketball prices basketball. matching. Yeah. This is probably the best part of this video for everybody. So, uh, the Bascom, you know, Bascom's price is $220 a pound, I believe, for golden and amber and then goes down in wisconsin they pay the same for the top three grades so 220 220 huh. so we are going to be above that um and then we're going to try some different things it'll be interesting so yeah dark robust is 210 210 but we're paying you know 220 220 220 for the top three grades but we are looking at some sort of bonus structure for producers in Wisconsin. We're for trying to figure it out. Yeah, Bob, there's no doubt. Like, this is this is why. I mean, I, I get a chance to blow V8. I got, you know, why not? So here we go. I'll blow V8 a little bit on, on the bulk prices, sir. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, farmers don't want a top end. You know, they don't want a top end because they're so afraid their neighbor's going to get $4 a pound when the price goes through the roof. So they don't want a top end. This actually is what this is the bondage that is actually working against the farmer. If I went to farmers and said, "Hey, I'll give you two fifty a pound right now for the next three years," none of them will take it. They won't because they're so afraid that it's going to go up over two fifty. Yet two fifty, two fifty, two fifty USD. Uh, I'm talking U- United States dollars here. Yep. Is better than two twenty. 220, 220, 275, 220, 220, like consistently. So Welch, yeah. Welch's yeah. grape juice has already proven this, right? So Welch's is a uh, grape juice company. It's a co-op owned by the farmers. And they're based along Lake Erie and, well, they were in western New York and then along into uh, Pennsylvania. And even there was some acreage in Ohio. And if you go to buy Welch's contract land, you get, you basically have to pay double because Welch's has a contract that is steady. It takes out the dips and the peaks and the dips and the peaks. And the banks would rather loan money to farmers that know they're going to get, I'm just going to use syrup pricing, uh, two sixty five a pound every year. Right? So Welch's has, if you have a contract on your grapes, it's two sixty five a pound every year. And the land's worth double. So the farmers, and by the way, the grape juice prices can go over that. And then they can go under it. And under it. Go over it and under yeah. it. So Welch just says, look, customers, they go to Walmart and everybody and say, look, you can chase the market, but we're going to be this. We already have our, you know, we're farmer owned. They have a contract. In the maple industry, it would, it, they're too afraid that they're going to miss out on $3 a pound. Yeah. Isn't that basically what the Federation does in Canada? Like, the Isn't Federation that basically is supposed what to trying... keep stability in the market um, by having supply. So this is interesting. And most government programs end up causing the exact opposite of their intent. Yeah. If you're a Milton Friedman guy or any sort of economics person, what did Milton Friedman say? If you put the federal government in charge of the Sahara Desert, they will run out of sand in like three years. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. So we have a government entity, essentially quasi-government. So... Uh, there's no competition, right? So Quebec has the federation and they control the supply, so therefore control the price. It's kind of like OPEC. Yeah. So OPEC controls output. But we have this weird thing going on where they don't have any supply. It's so in the description yeah. of this video, you can read the they only have like what 60 thousand. It was not it, very much. No, it's not. So they're it, gonna have don't they can I heard uh, tell me if this is true or not, Nate. I heard that they tell certain producers how much they can make as well. Like, the, oh, you can only make so many gallons. And this so they have quotas. 
I, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just going to say it. I'll be wrong about some things, I'm sure. But I have strong beliefs that are weakly held. So if somebody can tell me, hey, that's not quite yeah. right, I'm, I'm yeah. fine with it. But yeah. they have quotas, and a farmer is only allowed to make so much. But the quota system really ran into trouble when farmers started using vacuum. So, yeah. you know, they started making more per tapple. They got better. So they're like, you yeah. can only make this much. And then they started making more with the same amount of taps. Same amount of taps, yep. Right? And then that yep. syrup has to be purchased by the Federation, and the farmers yep. in Quebec don't get paid until it's sold. Sold, correct. Right. So in the United States, there can be agreements. Large producers understand this. Uh, the smaller producers don't quite understand this. But large producers, if they're making you know $2 million of maple syrup, somebody like me, I can't just write a check for $2 million but I can pay them over time as cash flow allows. Larger producers mm -hmm. understand this. Smaller producers probably can't fathom the fact that you would um, basically act as a bank for the farmer or for the packer. It does happen. Like, yeah. In fact, this industry wouldn't exist if the farmers didn't do that. Uh, yeah. Yep. Because the bank's going to loan you money based on what you sold last year. So if you're me, they're going to say, oh, nice, Bissell. Here you go. That's what you're allowed to borrow. Yes. Yeah. But if I go and borrow a bunch of money to buy syrup early in the season, I'm paying interest all the way till next season. So if I try to buy all the syrup I need at the beginning of the season, yeah. like on large scale, that's not possible. Yeah. Yeah. On small little guys yeah. that are packing 50, 60,000 gallons a year, that can work. Like they can work some things out, but. When you're packing a larger amount of syrup, you have to work with the farmers, and most of them understand that. And I was talking yeah. to a producer in, in Vermont, and I thought this was interesting. He said Jim McIsaac, who's the guy who started Highland Sugar Works, would write 12 checks and post date them. And it was brilliant because he'd hand the farmer at the beginning of the season, right after he picked up the syrup, a, a stack of checks, and every month the farmer could cash the check. Yep. And I'm like, that's cool. The small producers, you know, they're borrowing from the kids' college fund. They're doing all sorts of goofy things. They got their wife yelling at them because they took the vacation money and they, you know, they had Bought to get a micro two because they're, you know, they, need another, <laughs> they got to upgrade their, to a micro two because the micro one only had whatever stories they tell each other. Yeah. Yep. But they got, they got to sell their syrup now. Well, the reason that, you know, you're, you're just getting your cash, it's a small amount of the syrup is sold, you know. Yeah. Did you so, see that one there? He said it's not all of Canada, it's Quebec only. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So yeah. New Brunswick and Ontario both produce it. I think he uh who else makes it? Do they make syrup? Is it Newfoundland up there? I don't know. But yeah, they make syrup. Um they still claim to make 90% of the syrup in Quebec. It's a cartel. <laughs> so I see some there's a maple farming family. In Ontario, across Lake Erie, somewhere. So they get the benefit of being Canadian maple syrup, but not having to deal with the Federation. Interesting. And I can't Do you think, think that's maple. why I've heard rumor that that's why CDL bought that bottling is because some of the. It, it's kind of a way around the Federation. Is what I've been hearing an angle. Is that? Do you think there's any truth to that? Know. Anything we would say if we were right, it'd be by accident. We would have yeah. the wrong logic, but you know, it's yep. kind of like at the beginning of Ghostbusters. You remember when he was zapping the guys with the card? There was the girl in the in the mail. The guys she'd get it wrong every time, and he'd get it right, and boom. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, a couple wavy lines. He's like, "I'm sorry, this just sorry. It's in it's your like, day." <clears throat> you know, the gun shoots out. Yeah. Yeah, so like all uh, of our guessing, like we're uh, you know, we're just yeah. guessing. I really I don't know that much. I mean, I, I listen. It'd be pretty smart if it was though. If it was kind of you know, yeah. New Holland produces. Yep. He says right there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they have all of the benefits, but it's the same thing. They're supposed to create stability, and in the end, the very thing they're supposed to be creating is not going to happen so they're actually going to they're going to create the very thing they were they were built to prevent we're on the verge of it but i don't know i think that a lot of u.s packers i don't know this for sure but i think they bought a lot to be prepared for a bad season uh and 
and then we had like a decent season, so they ended up with I all see. this syrup. Yeah. Is Newfoundland actually the one that has like the island that's like basically all maple producing only? Is that Newfoundland or is that something different? I don't know. I was watching, I stumbled upon it on YouTube like a month ago, and it, there's like this maple island basically. It's basically one guy. His family just does maple on this whole island. It was kind of cool. I think cool. it was new I'll have to try that to find out. Cool. Well, we need some it's questions. Somewhere. I'll get, uh, you know, I'm often wrong, but I'm never in doubt, David. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nate, there's a surplus from last year. Is question. there a surplus from last year? I don't know. I mean, I think Bruce Baskin once told me, he said, there's always more syrup in the field than you think. There is always more syrup in the field than you think. So, yeah, there is uh, in the news. Canadian reserves are down. But I will say, if Franklin County has a good season, which it looks like they're going to, we could make no syrup in the state of Ohio, and it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Like I, I said, wonder if they're trying to bring Gary the price Corey up by makes, saying that. Gary Corey makes as much syrup as the state of Ohio. Like, That's crazy. One producer. How long is maple syrup? Oh, packaged right indefinite. Right. Forever. Good question. Yeah, more questions. Yeah. I'm getting I'm getting to be about done if we don't get any more. Yeah. There's 66 still though. We had I saw it seemed like 78 at one time. That means some like gaming channel just let out. Like they just they're done gaming and they're like, hey. <laughs> Let's go mess with Thank the maple you. farmers. Yep. Yeah, like Franklin County makes half the maple syrup. That's crazy. So Quebec is paying 25 cents a pound. That's like More yeah, 25 cents. So everything is like 0.75. So whatever that is, it'd be like 19 cents. How long can concentrate sit around? Uh, that's not a good thing. No. How about Rise, how much syrup are you buying from Wisconsin? I would like to buy 100,000 gallons, roughly a quarter of your crop. Uh, that's on paper. Um, oh, how long I'm can sure. 8% concentrate? I see what it says now. I'm trying to see here. Well, if you keep it at like, what, 33 degrees, just above freezing in a cooling tank it it could go for what 24 48 hours maybe how, how long are you going to try holding in your tank nate that you're getting set up your your concentrate so andy in the video i'm making with andy humphrey he was talking about how early season sap keeps better uh he'll make it slushy so it's actually slushy in his concentrate tank okay yep. but he also said that later season sap it doesn't matter even if it's a little frozen It'll it'll turn start turning the, mi the microbes are just going at it, you know. Which interesting. That's interesting to me. Like, how are they doing that? They're like they should be inanimate. They should be like, yeah, you know, frozen. It's nature, man. It's the well, me. Yeah, I don't know. I see lots of things in the industry that just I question and I'm challenging, um, like the whole the whole drum situation and. In Wisconsin, it's interesting about. I don't understand why a producer, first of all, will do anything out of fear. Like I'm afraid I will lose this bulk. You know, I'm afraid. Like fear. There shouldn't be fear in a relationship You're between a farmer and producer. So if a if a bulk buyer gives you drums and you take them, I, then you feel for some reason obligated. To sell them the syrup, even if it's below market, I don't understand that. Like, go buy your own freaking drums so you aren't in bondage. Unless you have an agreement, like, this yeah. producer will buy from, like, hey, yeah, I've always provided drums, but as this grows, like, from an economic standpoint, the consumer, it's just going to keep driving to more and more efficiency. Yeah. So, we're actually looking at tankers. Like, I want to send a tanker to Andy's. Andy's going to buy the drums from the farmers, pump them out, put them in the tanker. The farmer picks their drum up, 
right then. Like we're, we can Take suck a drum out in like 30 seconds with these pumps today. Like a 55 yeah. gallon drum, 30 seconds it's gone. Yeah. Get as much as you can. The farmer, he can take his drum. It's going to be weighed before and after because a lot of these drums, the tear weights aren't accurate. Like, uh, yeah. So the farmers are going to get their drums that day. And here's another piece yep. of information. There, then there's no sorting on your part or transportation cost back and forth. Correct. So buy stainless. If I'm a farmer in Wisconsin, go ahead and invest in stainless. Yes. Like, Anywhere. Because I think we're going to be buying standard. it by the tanker load. Like we're starting yep. this with totes. So. Um, Andy's going to basically buy the drums from the farmers. They can take their drums that day, pump it into totes, and the totes will come to Jefferson. So now I've got totes that don't, they don't have anybody's name on it. We'll steam clean them, and we'll just yep. keep a rotation going. But the Dang, drums that's, will that's be there. Genius. That's genius. Well, it's, Is that it's what you were looking happen, into the right? railway? Is that what you were looking into the railway for? The train stuff is that kind of what? You yeah, had in like mind? I think I think rails the future. I do. I think rails the yeah. future. So that's why the buildings I'm looking for in Maine and Wisconsin, I'm looking for buildings with rail access. That's nice. So if it has yep. rail access, you can haul seven, seven point four semi truck loads of maple syrup on one rail car. Wow. So and I really want to like, I want to do like a hobo video where I'm inside the rail car and like <laughs> ride it. <laughs> like with a like Fred and I were talking about getting like a little Coleman stove. Like if you shipped a rail car of maple syrup, wouldn't you want to go with it? Like ride in there, make like a little. That's funny. So I did that in high school. Don't recommend you wrote, it. You rode a rail car. So me and a buddy one night decided there's a train that comes through our town. Like. Once a night, it was like usually about 11 o'clock, 11.30 somewhere. Well, they have to slow down to like a crawl through our little town. Like we're talking, you can jump on the thing. And we're like, hey, let's just ride it to our buddies down there in Leslie, you know? So we just decided to hop on this thing. Well, we did. Well, dude, once that thing gets out of town, she's going. And guess what she doesn't do at Leslie? Slow back down. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> and you did not realize that a train going cross country in like four minutes is like a half hour drive in like a three day walk back home. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Uh, I really went off was it. not so graceful. I will tell you that. I've never rolled and tucked in a uh, lava rock flying. Did you do this with bad. somebody? Yes, I did. I'm yes. kind of curious, like how long it would take, because you know I need to pack a bag of snacks. I just say don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a poor decision, dude. We yeah, jumped off the thing know, like, like 30 miles an hour. That's crazy. And we were already almost to Jackson. It was like that's that crazy. quick. It was. It was a yeah. Well, they say I it's feel. not much slower than trucking. So uh, everything I'm reading, like I'm just researching the snot out of it because maple syrup used to leave from southern Pennsylvania and the farmers would take their syrup to a rail station down there and it would go all the way up to Reynolds Maple Syrup in Wisconsin. Reynolds was the largest maple syrup company in the United States. They had a contract with um, General Mills and most artificial pancake syrups had real maple syrup in it. So Think about how much fake pancake syrup was sold. And then if you had somebody um, collecting all that syrup, how much volume it is. They, they were shipping it by rail tanker to General Mills. That's how much wow. syrup they can go in. Oh, yeah. Oh, just my a gosh. Bit. So if rail was efficient then, it's going to be efficient now. But we do have a system now where, you know, where you have, you know, drums going from the farmer to the packer, you know, drums going back. It's very inefficient. And the consumer in the end is not going to, want to pay for it. I mean, Maple Grove, oh. they don't buy any syrup in the United States anymore. And if they do, it might as well come out of their marketing budget because they get tanker loads from Canada that come down into St. Johnsbury and unload. So the Canadian syrup comes in by tanker, drops off in St. Johnsbury, and then the tanker goes back. There's no drums to wash. There's no drums to return. They don't even, 
think about how much less labor that Maple Grove, which yeah. is owned by BG Foods, how much less labor is involved with not handling drones. It's all yeah. being handled up north. So yeah. the drones, you know, yep. it's interesting. That's wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm like, well, if it's working for them, why can't we do it in the United States? Yeah. yeah. So that's you know, cool. if their entire system is going to like completely destabilize Maple, we're going to have to create our own stable system. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little paranoid. I think if it can happen, it will. Yeah. But what are you thinking? Yeah, I'm good, man. It was good talking with you. Yeah, man, this was good. This was a good one. People really need to watch this one. That's for sure. Some good little be bits in there. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks everybody for uh, moderating. I didn't know it was a full time job. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> I'm sure you love yeah. it. Yeah, so you're right, Bob. It, if it's packaged with Vermont syrup on the front label, it should say Vermont. But it's, uh, what do you call it when it's appearing to be something ambiguous? So if somebody grabs a bottle from Maple Grove and it says an address, St. Johnsbury, Vermont. So this is the scheme, right? So you're relying on the ignorance of the consumer. This is why I built a YouTube channel. Anybody whose business is relying on a scheme, that means honesty, like you don't want anybody to know your secret, that's not a business. That's a scheme. So the scheme they're running is the syrup comes from Canada, gets put in a bottle, and on the back of the bottle it says St. Johnsbury, Vermont, but it also says product of Canada and United States. So I'm sure throw a teaspoon in that batch. You know, whoever they're using out of the marketing budget to buy U.S. syrup, well, they, they, I'm sure they do because it's product of U.S. and Canada. But like I said, that's yeah. that's a, uh, um, yeah, should come out of the marketing budget. So, but does the consumer care? We care, but we don't buy it. Yeah, we don't buy it. Like, we, if you could ask farmers, like if the consumer would ask farmers, like, hey, who's doing what? Who's actually buying U.S. syrup and keeping their label honest? And the consumer doesn't want to work that hard. That's why we yeah. need YouTube channels. It was cool. Some of the producers that came to my Maple Weekend, we actually uh, were sitting there talking uh, after some people left and someone stayed back. We were all talking, and this topic got brought up about the glass versus plastic. And I said, guys, we're the only ones that care. You know, because I was telling them about <laughs> me and you were just talking about this. I was like, you know, he's right. They're, they're Half of them are used to buying in plastic. You know, mm -hmm. and then you can't ship the glass. Yeah, I said, we're the only ones ports. that care. Four million quarts are sold in Costco. Yeah. Plastic. We're, we're the only that's, ones. That that's the U.S. crop. It's sold in plastic. Is anybody selling yeah. that much glass? I don't, you know. So yeah. someone's asked if I still tapped. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Austin's doing. It's getting. You're, you're not boiling anymore, though. No, I, I you know, I don't yeah. know if he's pulling taps. I think he is. Yeah. You know, if somebody ever goes, Nate, you really don't even know how to make syrup, I'll be like, Yeah, yeah, I like I'm like, okay, you got me. Austin does, Kevin does. Got so me. yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Singer. All That's right. Funny. All right, we'll catch hey. you. See you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.